Now let me show you a, a simulation demonstration program. Okay. Uh, what's happened is we, this time we have a tube with one opened end. So here is a tube with one opened end. Okay. Now what's happened is we can basically move Okay. We can basically uh, actually slide the end of the tube to the right, then we have a longer tube, or we push it in forward, we have a shorter tube, so, yeah, something like that. Okay. And here they play a music sound. Okay. Okay. The idea is, okay, say if the okay, say if the uh, tube is this long, has this length. Okay. And uh, the fundamental frequencies, yeah, actually, okay, let me actually let me show you this on paper first. Okay. So the idea is always remember the different thing for sound is the velocity of sound is constant; it cannot be changed. It, it can be changed by the den uh, density of the temperature of the air, but uh, normally it's pretty much constant. I can't. Uh, if I short loader, if I talk loader, it doesn't make sound travel faster. Okay. So, and uh, the equation, the wave equation tells me okay, the velocity of sound is frequency times wavelength. It's always frequency times wavelength. Okay. So it doesn't matter uh, a hundred hertz sound, or a thousand hertz sound, or ten thousand hertz sound. Okay. They have different wavelengths, and the velocity will be the same. Okay. They will travel at the same speed at the same time at the same location. Okay. So, so here is what's happened with all those music uh, music instruments. Okay. Say if I have a tube, okay, and the tube has only those uh, harmonic, fundamental harmonic, first overtone and second overtone uh, frequencies. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the velocity of the sound is the same. So the, the fundamental and the harmonic frequencies are pretty much set it. Okay, by the length of the tube. Okay, so uh, if you play instruments, you know, okay, so a music instrument, especially those tube thing, okay, uh, operating on tube thing, okay, what's happened is somehow you can manipulate the length of the tube. Okay, uh, yep, and by doing this, at the same time, you need to blow into the tube okay, at the same frequency of the uh, certain harmonic frequency that the, the that the tube produces, then you have a you have a higher sound intensity, thus the music music instrument plays music. Okay. Now here is just a perfect example for it. Now, now initially, okay, let's have a look. Initially, we have five. 512 hertz sound, okay. and uh, the length of the tube initially is zero, uh, and then as I play, press play, it will start. Sorry. So as I press play, okay, the length of the tube would increase. Okay, let's have a look. Now, what we're hearing is the 512 hertz sound. Okay. Now, let's say what's happening if is the lens increasing. Okay, have a look at this, the pressure graph. Okay, now, when the graph is around, uh, let me, yeah, actually, let's, let's do it. Yeah, when the graph, uh, when the lens of the tube is at this lens, Okay, its fundamental fre frequency will be 512 hertz. Okay. So if, I, if I'm playing 512 hertz to this tube, what's happening is this tube is going to make the sound louder. Okay. It's, 
it will resonance. It will make this sound very louder. That's basically what does the instruments, uh, musical instruments do. If you play, if you can give the right frequency at the right time, the instrument will make the sound louder. Okay. Now, let's say what's going on if it continues. Now, the stand, uh, yeah, at this point, the standing wave is not uh, 512 hertz anymore. So as a result, the volume will be lower, okay, just as what the speaker gives out. So at this point, the volume become louder, so this will be uh, in uh, the next harmonic. It will be the next harmonic. So, yep. So again, after passing the next harmonic, the tube would do nothing to the sound again because the fundamental frequency of the harmonics of the tube of this lens doesn't match with this frequency. Okay. Now we need to increase the length of the tube until it matches with the next frequency and here it is. Okay, you see the pressure graph, it starts doing otherwise it will go down. So in this case, we identified three fundamental, well, three uh, harmonic frequencies of the tube uh, of this lens and, and this, yeah, okay. So uh, let's, yeah, let's do some calculations on this. Okay. Now, again, okay. the frequency, the harmonic frequencies, okay, depends on the length okay, of the tube, the close end tube. Okay. So just let me write down one closed and tube. Oh, one and closed, well, a tube with one, one and closed. So uh, just, yeah, just make sure you write them down in the right, uh, in the right order, okay? So for this, just remember, at the open end, we have the anti-node. Okay. At the closed end, uh, sorry, my mistake. At the open end, we will have the node. Okay. At the red, at the open end, we have the anti node here. Okay. So if I sketch it, it will be something like this. Okay. And this is basically the first harmonic. Okay. The first harmonic. We also call it uh, the fundamental frequency. Okay. If we, if I try to develop an equation, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me write it down like this. The wavelength of the first harmonic of this tube, lambda one, will be length times four. 
it will be four lengths. Because if you have a look, because if you have a look at this graph there, it's basically only a quarter of a whole period. A whole period is a sound curve, it's just a quarter of it. So it's four lengths. Then the frequency will be divided by the wavelength, it will be velocity frequency 1 will be velocity. The first ha harmonic frequency will be velocity divided by 4L. Okay. Now if you look at the second one, if you go to uh, the next over term, we have a nodal on this point, we have anti-nodal on this point, okay. The graph will be something like this. Okay. The graph will be something like this. Okay. So, yep. Now, the important thing here is okay, we call this the third harmonic. Just remember, for the tube with one and closed, we don't have a second, we don't have a fourth harmonic. We only have the first one, the third one, and the fifth one. We call it the first, third harmonic, or the second over turn. Okay, so this is the reason why they get uh, actually, yeah. So remember, with both and closed, we have the first, we have the second, which is second is the first overtone, but with tube of one and closed, we have the first harmonic, third harmonic, and the third harmonic is the second overtone. It's, yeah, this is just how we name it. So, and in mass, when we write it down, the wavelength of the third harmonic is written down as lambda 3. Okay. Say, if you want, you can have a look at your pa uh, notes page 8.8. .8. Okay. And uh, the wavelength of this will be basically your length divided by 4 and times 3. Okay. Length actually divided by 3 times 4. So the length of the tube divided by 3, yeah. the length of this whole tube divided by 3, okay, if you have a look, okay, now, and each of it will be a quarter of the wave. So and then we times it by 4, we have the wavelength. Okay, divided by 3 times 4. The frequency, F3, okay, will be velocity divided by wavelength, okay, which is a fraction. If you put it in right, you get this. Okay. Then the important thing is note 1 times V divided by 4L, I have 3 times V divided by 4L now, okay, which is the third harmonic. And we call it the second overtone in this scenario. Okay. Similarly, If we go to the next overtone, the third overtone, I will have a node point here, and I have an anti-node at the end, then, then you have something, something like this. Actually, uh, Let me draw it properly. So I have this comes up and comes down. Yep, yep, that's right. Yep. Okay, we have this kind of graph now. This is your fifth, our fifth harmonic. Okay. Which is our third 
overtone in this scenario. So, um, yep, just a lot of students get confused with harmonic and the second or third overtone with the other one. Just make a nose on your D7, uh, on your chase sheet. Okay. With, with tube of one closed end, they're different. Okay. Now, and we, when we write it down, it's linda 5, it's not linda 3, linda 3 is this one. Or uh, 4, okay, we only have this. So, uh, yeah, if you put, if you really do the calculations, everything, uh, what you get is 4L divided by 5, and the frequency 5 will be 5V divided by 4L. Okay, so the general equation for this will be your n will be the number of harmonics, and it only can be 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. So, and the equation, okay, equation for wavelengths okay, will be n v, sorry, n 4L divided by n. Okay, please copy it down in your notes. Okay, n is the number of harmonic. And uh, the frequency in this case, okay, the frequency in this case okay, will be um, n times v divided by 4l, okay, where n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so if you, well, if you, if I gave a length of this, what we can say is, uh, the other thing I need to make it clear is this. Okay? Now, if you try to find the frequency of the fundamental frequency uh, and the third harmonic frequency and the fifth harmonic frequency of a certain pipe, you find that its ratio is going to be 1 to 3 to 5. Okay. So if the fundamental frequency in here is 100 Hz, the third harmonic frequency will be 300. The fifth harmonic frequency will be 500. Okay. The increase by ratio, okay. 1, 3, 5. That's the reason we name it third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and the first harmonic. We don't have a second and a fourth harmonic. Okay. Now, similarly with... Uh, with this kind of, similarly with this kind of uh, tube, okay, with tube with open end, okay, so we have F1, F2, and F3. Okay. The ratio between the first harmonic and the second harmonic and third harmonic will be 1 to 2 to 3. So let me just do an example. Okay. That's for open ended. One to two to three. Okay, so if I tell you the fundamental frequency is hundred hertz, okay, the second harmonic must be two hundred hertz and the third harmonic must be three hundred hertz. They just follow ratio like this. Okay.